our starting lineups. McKenzie Holmes for IU, the player to watch. The center is 17 points away from breaking the all-time record at Indiana. Holmes wins the tip-off against Mary Ashley Stevenson, and the Hoosiers control it to start. Here's Lexitz Bargesser. They feed to Holmes right away. She's against Stevenson, the freshman. Holmes, left hand, got it. They're looking to get her going early, Zion, and I don't blame them whatsoever. She has been killing it all season long. Coming off a 28-point performance in that win against Michigan State. Purdue on the other end. Kick is back out to Caitlin Harper. Harper in the lane. Swings it to Abby Ellis. Ellis to Janae Terry. Terry pulls up for the mid-range. Jay off the mark. Great movement there to just try and find something, but that's just phenomenal defense from Indiana and led by the anchor in Chloe Moore McNeil, who's really been the heart and soul of this Indiana defense all season long. Terry for Purdue, kind of the catalyst of the offense, missing that shot. Bargesser again for Indiana. Two more McNeil. Into the corner, yard and Garazon. Bargesser is going to fade. Can't get the roll. And that one's knocked out of bounds by Garazon. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough shot right there from Bargesser. As we see Katie Geralds in her third season as Purdue's head coach, one of the all-time legends of this historic program, and now trying to get them back to where they were when she was a player. It's been 10 straight wins for Indiana over Purdue. Terry with the ball for the Boilers, and a foul is going to be called. Offensive foul on Madison Layton. Now that's an early turnover here from the Boilermakers. That's something that's really been hurting them this year. 15.5 turnovers per game. That's something that Indiana will try and exploit throughout the day. So Layton tabs with the off-ball foul. And Indiana gets it right back. Warren McNeil, fresh off a triple-double, feeds the Holmes right back up to her. They swing it, Scalia for the three. Too much on that one, but it's tracked down by Barbasur. Into the corner with Barbasur, driving baseline. And they will call a foul down low. But that was a great look. That was a great look right there from Scalia that all got set up from the double team down low with Holmes. Here. Terry Moore in her 10th year with IU, the all-time winningest coach in the history of this program. As they set up a play for Scalia, but right on it are the Boilermakers. Down low, Garzone versus Terry. Into Bargasser, 12-foot J. Good. As Purdue has made an early sub, Madison Layton with two fouls, so they bring in Rashonda Jones. And Jones has it in the corner now. Feed to Stevenson. Going against Garzone. Stevenson up and around Garzone. Broken nose, no problem for her. She's been cooking ever since she put the mask on, averaging about 13 and a half points since she put the mask on just a few games ago. Mary Ashley Stevenson got surgery on that nose on Tuesday, but has not missed a beat. Kick out pass, Garzone open for the Hoosiers. Off back iron, but tracked down again by Barbasur. Down to Holmes, who is swarmed and foul. You look at Gerald again, her team already committing three early fouls here in this first quarter. Hoosiers lead by two with the basketball. They get it into Scalia. She fires right away. Sarah Scalia, the sharpshooter, does what she does best. I mean, she's one of the best in the country at doing what she does, Zion, and that's shooting threes. Only two games this season without at least one made three, and has three plus in her last six games as well. Janae Terry looking to set it up for Purdue. Against Moore McNeil, and an offensive foul is going to be called on the opposite end of the court. So Purdue just racking up the fouls so far. Yeah, that can really hurt you. Indiana is not a team that you really want to send to the free throw line. They've got a lot of consistent shooters from the stripe, shooting 73% as a team so far this season. Foul goes against Caitlin Harper. Scalia finds some space again. 
This time, can't knock it down, and Terry comes away with it. I mean, right now, Purdue's got to be so thankful that Indiana isn't knocking down their triples. They're certainly looking for them early here. IU hit 15 threes in the first matchup between these two teams. As Ellis goes to work against Moore McNeil and banks it through. Abby Ellis, the leading scorer on this Boilermaker squad. Holmes in the post. She scored the first two points of this game. Good defense that time by Caitlin Harper. Yeah, that's a great stop from Harper. Holmes is certainly not an easy person to stop there on the low block. Now Harper, a shooting threat, has it outside. They get it back to Rashonda Jones. Jones looking for some space in the mid-range. Back out to Stevenson. The rainbow three drops. That is her second made three all season. She was one for 18 coming into today. When the mask comes on. <laughs> Superpower, she's Batman. We're tied at seven. Moore McNeil trying to direct IU's offense. Back over to Holmes. Those two play some two-woman action. And Moore McNeil steps into the mid-range, Jay, here. Indiana may be starting to go away from Mackenzie Holmes just a little bit on that low block, but when you have so many different scorers that can do it from all three levels on the floor, it just makes you so dangerous. Abby Ellis, not that time on the three. And the Hoosiers look to push. That's what they did so often against Michigan State on Thursday. They find more McNeil open back to back. Buckets for more McNeil. And what a response right there for more McNeil. I mean, right there, that's just a six-point swing that happens in an instant. Chloe Moore McNeil fresh off the first triple double of her career. And how about that? The fourth all time in Indiana program history, and the all other three were all Grace Berger. And if Moore McNeil is headed to the same place as Berger's at, it's a good sign, but Purdue answers on the other end with Caitlin Harper. As similar to the game in West Lafayette a few weeks ago between these two, we've got a three point shootout, Joe. When it rains, it pours. That's the feeling so far. Garzone can't hit, but she will go to the foul line. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Kind of in and out move by Meister. But off the mark, and now they change the call. Yeah, I was about to say, that one looked like it was last off Purdue. The student section right behind the basket was letting that baseline official hear it. Other one came over, ultimately changed the call. But you said it, that's great footwork from Meister. And if you look at the, the jump she's made from her freshman campaign to this season, it really all starts with the footwork on the low block. She's really excelled. Now it's just about finishing those looks when you get them down low. Scalia. It's going to take it off the dribble this time. Runner goes. I mean, when she can do it on the outside and then drive inside with that kind of penetration, I mean, Scalia is just so difficult to guard. Three-point Indiana lead. Pass is picked off by Chloe Moore McNeil. Moore McNeil finds Meister. Meister has it stripped by Abby Ellis. Yeah, but that was the right read there from Moore McNeil looking to go down low off the pick and roll. Now, Moore McNeil really doing it on both ends for Indiana, getting the steal and the assist. That's, that's really the, the main role she's taken for the Hoosiers this season. Terry Moore said she expects Moore McNeil to guard the best player on one end and facilitate the offense on the other. Ellis has it as the shot clock winding down for Purdue. She's going to have to put this up. Does she realize it? She flips it up, and it just rolls off. Scalio racing down the court for Indiana, and she gets swatted by Smith, but a foul called on Jayla Smith. Initially, that looked like it was going to be a phenomenal defensive play there from Smith. Looked like she tracked it down step for step, but just at the tail end of it, gets a piece of the body. You'll see it right there, and that's going to send Scalia to the line. And Scalia, a phenomenal free throw shooter as well. Second best in the Big Ten this season at 88% for Sarah Scalia. Just one of the best all-around shooters in America. And she's another player on this Indiana team that, that really took a big step this year. I mean, 
when you lose a player like Grace Berger to the to the WNBA draft, I mean, that production's got to come from somewhere, and she's really stepped up. The announcer jinx was just on time, and she didn't miss the second free throw. <laughs> and now Mary Ashley Stevenson rolls home the layup. She's just playing aggressive. I mean, she's looking for for open space, carving into the lane, and getting whatever she wants here early. Fresh into the game, Lene Beaumont gives to Scalia. Hand off, Bargesser. Bargesser has the switch on Harper, but kicks it back out to Scalia. Scalia gets blitzed into McKenzie Holmes, double teamed, doesn't matter. And I mean, the Purdue defenders are really sagging off Bargesser on the perimeter, trying to dare her to shoot, and instead just double teaming Holmes down low, but that's something she's accustomed to. She's used to being double teamed down there. She's slicing through the defense with relative ease. Stevenson wants to work again. Harper thought about a three. She'll kick it to the point guard, Jones. Jones goes right at Bargesser. Wonderful defense. Beaumont in the corner against Abby Ellis. Bit of a push off, and on the second time, it will be called an offensive foul. They let her get away with one, Joe. Yeah. But when she did it again, it was an offensive foul. That, that's kind of the point where if she falls to the ground on the first, what I'll call, shove or shoulder, that's without a doubt going to be an offensive foul. Second time around, <laughs> great defense there from Purdue. That's just a careless turnover from Indiana. Freshman Beaumont commits the turnover and the foul. As we near the end of this first quarter, Rashonda Jones cut off by Bargesser again. Great defense by Alexis Bargesser. So now Jones will get a screen, and she took an extra step. Yeah, that's just all set up by phenomenal defense from Lexus. I mean, the footwork, just able to stay in front, constantly has a hand up in the face of the offensive player. Great communication on the pick and roll. I mean, that's, that's really textbook from, from Terry Moore and company. Shot clock turned off for the Hoosiers. They'll hold for one. So they have this four-point lead going into the final 20 seconds of the quarter. It'd be tough to think that they're going to try and go anywhere other than Mackenzie Holmes, just run it through her. If the double team comes, somebody's open. Lene Beaumont, five seconds to work with. Now over to Sarah Scalia. They're looking for Holmes. Bargesser has it in the corner. It's going to be a kicked ball on Mary Ashley Stevenson. Terry Morin <laughs> having a word with her players on the floor. Trying to I think she wanted Lexus <laughs> Bargesser to clear out there instead of staying in that corner. Yeah, I mean, when it, when it gets congested like that, on that wing corner area, it comes a lot easier for the defense to slow them down. So with two seconds, they inbound straight to Holmes. The jumper does not fall for McKenzie Holmes. And that's how this first quarter. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Years since Purdue won here, and right now they're on pace for another. We'll see what they have coming out of the timeout. They draw up the three for Caitlin Harper off the mark, and Moore McNeil comes away with it for IU. Racing down the floor, she lost the handle, and Rashonda Jones took it away. Jones now on the fast break, splits two defenders, and is called for an offensive foul. Yeah, she had the right idea, trying to slice her way inside, even hit her with the Euro step, but still just got a piece of that shoulder right there. And that's all it takes. Another offensive foul. That's the third one already here for the Boilermakers in the first half. Jules Lamandola drew the foul on Rashonda Jones. And that's just great defensive discipline, knowing where you are on the floor, outside the restricted area, setting up for it. Bargesser tries to get around Stevenson. She does. Those are her second basket of the game. Now up to four points for Indiana. Long ball drops for Sophie Swanson. Who just came into the game after that timeout. She shot that one all the way from Fort Wayne, Zion. She's a 39% shooter this year. The freshman providing a crucial shot for this Purdue team. 
Well, I mean, you just really can't speak enough about the freshman class this season at Purdue. They've really propelled the Boilermakers so far this year. Truly one of the best freshman classes in the Big Ten and arguably the NCAA. And then yeah, takes it away. Swanson, who made that three, was the 2022 Miss Basketball in Illinois. The 2023 Miss Basketball was Indiana's very own Lene Beaumont <laughs> in the state of Illinois. When Kitsy Holmes can't hit over Caitlin Harper, and Purdue looking to keep the momentum rolling. Terry to Harper. Harper now down low against Lamondola. A lot of contact, but we play on. That one was deflected out of bounds, straight into Katie Gerald's palms. It'll still be Indiana ball. Yeah, that was a great heads up play from Rashonda Jones just to get your arms in the air and try and get a piece of it. She's really been disrupting Indiana's offense on the perimeter so far today. Now she'll take a seat. So Holmes comes out for Lily Meister. Holmes with six points. 10 away from tying Tyra Buss's all-time scoring record here at Indiana. Sierra Scalia comes off the screen, launches, put too much on it, and Abby Ellis tracks it down for Purdue. There's Madison Layden getting it over to Stevenson. Stevenson finishes straight through the contact as Lamondola tried to draw another charge. This time she gets called for the block. It's an and one. Yeah, I didn't have a great look at where her feet were set up, but it, it, it seemed like she had good positioning. Yep, and you'll see it right there inside the restricted area. And still kind of hopping around as well. Yeah. So Mary Ashley Stevenson, four for four, now with nine points today after just having a career high 25 points and nine rebounds in the overtime dub over Illinois. So she hits the free throw to finish the three-point play. Purdue's got this down to an eight-point game. Warren McNeil into Scalia in the corner. Scalia rejects the screen and rolls it home with the reverse layup. Yeah, that's a great move. She just lost the weak side help with that little hesitation, and it was a clear path to the iron, just like that. <laughs> Speaking of a clear path, <laughs> Sophie Swanson, these freshmen for Purdue are getting the job done. 15 points between Stevenson and Swanson. It's a six-point game. Purdue's offense really starting to find a rhythm. Zion have made six of their last eight field goal attempts. Lamondola straight into Lily Meister. Meister against Harper. Just a tad too strong against Stevenson, rather. Yeah, it looked like she might have pulled the. Oh, great block. Good and defense. Swanson was feeling confident again. A heat check, but she had it swatted. Now, Rashonda Jones harassing Chloe Moore McNeil, but she gets it across and finds Bargasser. Up to Scalia. She rejects another screen, but this time the offense resets with Moore McNeil. Scalia with the back, has to step back, shot clock winding down, it doesn't matter. Oh my goodness. Sarah Scalia, how do you do? And now Bargasser on this Super Bowl Sunday, almost had a pick six. <laughs> Stopped at the one, and she'll go to the line. Oh, no tush push here. <laughs> now Bargasser shooting just 45% from the line this year, but knocks down the first. Yeah, I mean, her form is, is very unique, I think is the best way to put it. it starts it with one hand, then brings the, the follow hand over. Shoots it a little bit from the side like Lonzo Ball. I, I, I don't know the, the best way to describe it, but it is without a doubt unique. Nevertheless, she goes two for two. And Indiana on top by 11. As for the first time today, we see Milo Reynolds in the game. Number 15 for Purdue. Madison Layden up top trying to find the angle to Caitlin Harper, but that does not get through. It rolls out of bounds. And one thing that was great on that possession is right after it ended, you saw Sydney Parrish be the first one to jump off the bench and point the other way. Coaches have really talked about how much of a vocal leader she's continued to be even through this injury. Still in that boot. And Parrish just itching to get back out there. 
But her Hoosier still taking care of business without her, at least in today's ball game. Mid-range J for Holmes. Off back iron and into the hands of Madison Layton. Terry in transition. Rejected by Bargesser. Out to Reynolds. Rims out. Bargesser gets the board. Morgan McNeil finds Gare's zone. Left corner three. And it comes straight to Abby Ellis under the hoop. Pace has picked up on both ends. Purdue in a two plus minute scoring drought. They throw it into Mila Reynolds going against Jordan Gare's zone. Nifty move. Woo, put her in the spin cycle. Indiana again. Looking to go quickly. Scalia down to the block with Holmes. Holmes, nice find to Bargesser. Bargesser trying to find the glass. He does. And that's that's a phenomenal cut and awareness from Bargesser. And then you have the great awareness with her back to the basket from Mackenzie Holmes with eyes in the back of her head, seeing the backdoor cutter. Just phenomenal one-two punch right there. Bargesser has eight first half points. About 12 seconds separate the shot and game clock. As this will be Purdue's last possession of the half, likely. Janae Terry to Abby Ellis. She swarmed right back to Terry. Three on the shot clock. Terry just throws it into no man's land. That's another turnover. And, you know, pregame, Zion, we were talking to the coaching staff. They said, you know, we're, we're trying to keep Purdue under 60. And right now, we're right around that mark. The 10th turnover committed by Purdue in this first half against four Indiana turnovers. Commit 10 turnovers and a half, you can expect to be down by 11 plus. Yeah, and I mean, when this is a Purdue team that turns it over just over 15 times a game, and Indiana typically forces just around that same mark, so you've got a feeling there's gonna be a lot of them today. Right down Broadway goes Moore McNeil. She did not finish, however, and that is how this half ends. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Good contest by Sarah Scalia to force the miss. It's Purdue facing their largest deficit of the afternoon. Holmes whips it to Bargesser. Up top to Moore McNeil. Hands to Scalia, 10 on the clock. Scalia, sidestep, Trey, another one. Sarah Scalia has 17 points. And Indiana leads by 18. And then she's called for a foul. A little grabbing with Madison Layden down low. We got off to a little bit of a slow start today with Scalia. Shot, you know, one for four early on in this game from beyond the arc. But since then, now four for eight. She's just starting to cook on the outside, having her way. She gets a round of applause as she heads to the bench. Meanwhile, Sophie Swanson can't nail the mid-range jumper. Bargesser up to Moore McNeil. She sets her feet, and she does just as Scalia did. <laughs> and Moore McNeil's having a night from downtown as well. That her third triple, three for three. Perfection from beyond the arc. She's maybe not on triple-double watch like she was the other night, but Moore McNeil does have 13, four, and four now as Indiana called for the foul on the other end. The Hoosiers 14 to four advantage in this third quarter to open up a huge 21 point lead. Now on an 11-0 run. Layden has it for Purdue. Indiana switches. And so she goes straight to Harper who is fouled going up for the shot or whoever, they're able to find an open look very early into the shot clock. It almost feels like a seven second offense. Indiana was 15 of 23 from downtown the first time these two teams met on January 21st. The Hoosiers today, eight of 14. It's one of the best shooting teams in the country. As Harper goes two of two, she's up to 11 points. Now the Boilers show a press, something the Hoosiers 
struggled with against Ohio State a week ago today, but they did a much better job against versus Michigan State here on Thursday. Yeah, those turnovers against Ohio State was was really what lost in that game. I mean, you look at the turnover margin in the third quarter scoring differential. Oh my goodness, more than Joe, Joe, is there a magnet on this hoop right now? The Hoosiers cannot miss from beyond the arc. And Moore McNeil continues the perfection. That one felt like a heat check because she was perfect from the perimeter and continues it. Now up to a 22-point edge for IU. Uh, but as you're saying about that Ohio State game, you know, 23 turnovers, it's tough to win any kind of game like that. And then Michigan State come back, comes back with the similar kind of press that Ohio State was giving them the game before. And Indiana only had 10 turnovers last game. So without a doubt, that was something that the Hoosiers and Terry Moore had focused on and fixed pretty quickly. And they Beaumont has it for the Hoosiers up to Jules Lamandola. Freshman connection, now a handoff to Bargesser. Now the seniors connect, Moore McNeil gonna try another one. Oh my goodness. It's a Moore McNeil masterclass. It's starting to rain here in the halls, I am. Chloe Moore McNeil, 19 points. Has not missed the three today. Three threes made in a row here in this third quarter. She's five of five from deep. Taylor Maker defense, seven of 10 from the floor. A perfect five for five from downtown. I mean, she let three straight triples fly on three straight possessions and knocked them all down with no problem. And all coming from the exact same spot on the floor. So Purdue is at the free throw line in the bonus now after that last foul. And Madison Layden is able to hit both of them. Still a 23 point IU lead. But Purdue is ramping up the pressure, Joe. Something the Hoosiers have to be able to handle. Beaumont has it for IU, and it's kicked by Jayla Smith. Yeah, they're not making life easy whatsoever in terms of entry passes down low to Mackenzie Holmes. That's what IU has been looking for. It's really opened up the floor and, and been a big reason why they've had so much success beyond the arc. Down low, it's Mackenzie Holmes. She's got 11, met at the apex by Jayla Smith. Terrific defense by Smith and Purdue comes away with it. And I'm honestly surprised that one wasn't a tie-up. It looked like for a second they both had it in the air at the same time. But Purdue catches a break, doesn't get the jump ball. Able to go the other way and end the scoring drought. As Harper scores on the other end. By the way, if you just heard that roar in Assembly Hall, it is because Nebraska upset Iowa, which means that IU is right back tied with Iowa in the Big Ten standings should the Hoosiers be able to close this one out. And what a game that'll be when they square off once again here in the hall. That's one that everybody in the Big Ten has circled on their calendar. Sanvik foul, or not fouled, blocked up top rather. And Rashonda Jones comes down the other end for Purdue. Jones step back midi, short, and it's rebounded by Lamandola. As Moore McNeil again gets down the middle of the lane, scores again. She's up to 21 points, and Amanda has more on Chloe Moore McNeil. Well, thanks, Zion. You're absolutely right. And Terry Morgan has talked about how Chloe Moore McNeil has had to be so patient in her time here at Indiana, really put the work in and trust the process. We're seeing how that's worked out for her already. And Morin is also hoping that that transfers down to the freshmen like Lene Beaumont and Juliana Lamandola, being able to see somebody who just puts in the work each day at practice. And it finally comes through on the court with her triple-double and tonight once again, guys. Chloe Moore McNeil with a 12 point third quarter. She scored more than Purdue has in this period. And the Hoosiers now up by 24. I mean, three threes, and then she gets a three pointer the old fashioned way. Layden gets knocked down by Yard and Garzone, <laughs> who just gives a, a stale face to Tim Daly. Garzone didn't love the call, but she picks up the foul. It'll be more free throws for Purdue. Zion, it really is unbelievable how this Indiana team has so many different scores that can give you 20 on any given night. I mean, right now, Indiana with Moore McNeil at 22. You've got Scalia at 17. 
I mean, the, the ability for Garzon to score. We've seen Parrish do it multiple times this season. And of course, the All-American Holmes. It, it just makes Indiana so difficult to defend. And Purdue now just trying to scratch and claw their way back and potentially cut this to a, ideally a single digit deficit before going into the fourth. Chloe Moore McNeil now with the career high 22 points and counting. And Joe, I think it's time we label her the Purdue killer because this is now the sixth straight game she's scored 10 or more against Purdue. And this is somebody who, especially at the beginning of her career, wasn't much of a scorer. Yeah, and, and a, a big thing that we heard all season long from Terry Moore in, in press conferences was the only thing she really wanted more out of Chloe Moore McNeil was just more aggressiveness, more assertiveness on the offensive end, which can oftentimes be difficult to balance when you're that lead distributor. But as the season's progressed and she's really filled in that point guard role, you've seen the progress she's made, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. Sarah Scalia looked like she was going to have her fifth three of the afternoon, but an offensive foul was called on Lily Meister setting the screen, and Scalia <laughs> walks away in disappointment. And the turnovers starting to rack up here a little bit more in the third quarter. Indiana's already matched their first half total of four, now sitting at eight turnovers here with two minutes to go in the third. Rashonda Jones has it for Purdue. Trying to get around La Mandola, she can't. Now back to Janae Terry. Terry goes right, finds Jones. Smith in the corner. Can't get the roll. Cleared by IU. I mean, that's a great look, and that's ideally what you need to drop in order to get back into this ball game. but you can't really fade away from it. I mean, all you're looking for is just points, and when you've got an open look, you can't pass it up. LeMay Beaumont on the other end sinks the runner, and it's now 24 points the lead for IU. Janae Terry on the other end, quick responds with the J. Yeah, same idea as the last possession Purdue just had. This time, she just takes a couple steps in, makes the shot a little bit easier, able to sink it. Vargaser helps IU beat the press and gets fouled right at the hoop. And that's one part of Vargaser's game where, where if she can get a little bit deeper in her bag, maybe have a, like a nice six to eight foot floater right there just to go over top of the big man. And that's a great shot every single time. Nonetheless, still able to earn a trip to the free throw line. Unable to convert on the first free throw. Bargser does have eight points today to go with five boards and three dimes. She's just looked so much more comfortable and fluid this season after having that knee brace on all freshman year. She had that brace on after tearing her ACL and MCL during her senior season of high school. And she is somebody that clearly IU trusts. She's been the new starter with Sydney Parrish missing the last six games. And the Hoosiers have given her much more responsibility handling the basketball in that time. Without a doubt. And, and we, we've seen it even when she was coming off the bench this year. She's really been the, the sixth man, the spark plug that can provide a lot of energy. I mean, she, she really does it all for you. Mila Reynolds has it down low for Purdue, and Purdue has just been parading to the free throw line in this third quarter. Yeah, and we talked about how efficient the Boilermakers are from the charity stripe. They just keep getting back there, and they're knocking it down in an efficient clip. So far, uh, nine of 10 today. More to come here from Reynolds. Reynolds will shoot the eighth and ninth free throws of the afternoon for Purdue as she knocks down the first. Reynolds coming over this year as a highly ranked recruit. She's coming from Maryland where she spent her freshman season, the South Bend, Indiana native. Yeah, last season reached the Elite Eight with that Terp squad, bringing over a, a good veteran presence with some tournament experience. And she played with teammate Rashonda Jones at South Bend, Washington in high school. On the other end, Lyman Dolan buries one for the Hoosiers. Freshmen are starting to get involved here. First we see Beaumont. Oh, and a great steal there. Up ahead, Scalia lays it through. Indiana's starting to rack up the steal, Zion. That's the eighth steal so far today for the Hoosiers. Janae Terry stops for the 14-footer, left it short, and Indiana the coaching staff wants to hold for one, and Sarah Scalia realizes it once she gets the ball in her hands. Barkester, I don't think, knew at first. She, she was wanting to push again. 
Shot clock off. Bargesser behind the back. Fade away. Falls short. Ellis heaves one for Purdue. And that is how the third quarter will end. Floor still undefeated here in Assembly Hall, but you know, you, you drop one to Stanford on the road, Ohio State on the road, and the Hawkeyes on the road. And that's the only thing that leaves a big question mark about what's to come in postseason play for Terry Morin's squad. The Hoosiers, of course, won their first Big Ten regular season championship in 40 years last season. They won it in 83, did it again in 2023. They also have one from the 2002 Big Ten tournament. They are looking to potentially repeat or at least get a share of that title again this season. And it's an Indiana team that brings back so much talent from a year ago. Obviously with Mackenzie Holmes and Chloe Moore McNeil and the whole starting lineup, but you really only lose a Alyssa Geary and a Grace Berger, obviously the, the main name on that list and key departures. But it's been a, a big committee by making up in terms of what you lost from last year. and. Indiana's done a phenomenal job throughout the season. It, it really just boils down to just finding that one big win and that one big win on the road even. Holmes after the foul, knocks down both free throws. She is now three points shy of tying Tyra Buss for the most in Indiana history. Hoosiers ahead by 28. Janae Terry finds Mary Ashley Stevenson. They send two at Stevenson. She gets it back to Terry. Milo Reynolds hands it off. Another foul call down low. So Purdue will inbound. Foul call on Jules Lamandola. They get it in for a moment to Layden, but she Pulls it back out, Layden out the Big Ten logo, Layden straight to the rack. Can't hit it over Sarah Stalia. And now Indiana's got numbers for four on five. Lamandola thought about the trade, but will fire into McKenzie Holmes. Left-handed Holmes shot drops. And she is a bucket away from history. You know, earlier they had Lamandola and Beaumont on the Jumbotron, and they were saying how Terry Morin told him earlier in this season. Give it to Mackenzie Holmes if she's on the low block. She's an All-American. She's earned the ball, and she shows you why right there. She's starting to pick it up a little bit here, Zion. Abby Ellis misses the layup, and it goes out of bounds off of her Purdue Boilermakers. 30-point lead for IU now, the largest today. And Mackenzie Holmes over there talking to the coaching staff. Joe, I have a feeling this plays for her. As Moore McNeil finds Lamondola into Holmes. Holmes against Harper, kicks it back out to Bargesser. She'll drive it in, out to Moore McNeil. It's going to be three in the lane on Mackenzie Holmes. Yeah, I think Purdue might have also had the similar <laughs> feeling that Indiana was trying to get it down low to Holmes. Obviously, Bargesser driving inside, clogged it up just a little bit. They couldn't get out in time. Another turnover here for Indiana, the fifth of the second half. Janae Terry sets it up for Purdue. Layden up top. Scalia being physical with her. Layden ties the long two. And the rebound comes to Alexis Bargesser. Great defense there from Scalia. Bargesser to Lamandola. Lamandola finds Holmes, who cannot hit the layup as Janae Terry grabs it for Purdue. Terry into the corner. Swanson got it. That's a big triple there from Purdue. You needed something to end this scoring drought and just get the wheels going in the right direction. Back down to a 27-point game. Bargesser goes up and hits through the contact on Caitlin Harper. She'll have a chance for a three-point play. And McKenzie and, and Chloe Moore McNeil, I'm sorry, 
is in this huddle. I think she is telling all five players on the court to get the ball to McKenzie Holmes on the next possession. You think they're aware of the numbers? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit. As Tyra Buzz, who is at Indiana from 2014 to 2018, is number one as of right now. But Holmes fast approaching, two points away from taking that over. Meanwhile, Bargesser gets a three-point play. Bargesser, who has struggled mightily at the line, four for five today. She's got 12 points to go along with eight boards. Ashley Stevenson. Stevenson takes the J and nails it right in front of Jules Lamandola. Stevenson really having herself a day. Six to seven from the floor. 14 points. Morgan McNeil has it deflected off of Sophie Swanson out of bounds. As I just heard a fan behind us yell, Joe, everybody knows. <laughs> as, far, <laughs> as far as the way Purdue is guarding it and the, the way IU is approaching this. Moore McNeil fires it in to Lamandola. Right back to Moore McNeil. They'll set up the screen and roll. Over to Scalia. She'll try a three. Rattles out. Purdue comes away with it. Janae Terry pushing for Purdue. Down into Stevenson. Now it's Madison Layden. She tries another long two. This time she hits. Ever since Holmes has gotten one point away, that offense has slowly started to calm down just a little bit and Purdue's make, making up some ground. Bargesser gets to the foul line. A lot of contact on Harper, no call. And the entire Indiana bench is erate. They did not want her to put that shot up. Stevenson open for a second down low. Now she's doubled. Fires it over to Swanson, and Swanson hits another three. Yeah, that was just a great look. Able to reverse the floor with over the head pass. Morin visibly frustrated, called Moore McNeil over, ready to take a timeout. Here comes IU out of the break. They feed it into McKenzie Holmes. Holmes goes up and finishes. And McKenzie Holmes is immortalized. 2,365 points, the most in the history of Indiana women's basketball. Yeah, that's just such a great moment here in Assembly Hall to see Mackenzie Holmes become the all-time career-leading scorer for the Hoosiers. And she does it on a night with over 13,000 fans in attendance, the third largest regular season attended game here to celebrate Mackenzie Holmes. Their teammates embrace her and this fan base. They all knew it. They were ready to go crazy when Holmes Got that bucket, a Swanson, swat. Sarah Scalia on the left side. Man, that was vicious, right, right into the lap of Terry Morin, too. <laughs> a great heads up play there from assistant coach Rhett, just able to snag onto it. Indiana still ahead by 25, on their way to the 11th straight win over Purdue. Garzone piles it on, and Terry Morin quickly calls timeout. It looks like they're going to bring on Meister to give Holmes a nice round of applause. As this building emotional, they've watched McKenzie Holmes through all five seasons here. They've watched her grow from coming off the bench to start her career. And now to being the leading scorer in program history. She's dealt with quite a few injuries on her left knee. Specifically two years ago, she has passed Tyra Buss and Holmes, possibly the best player this program has seen, and now the numbers show that. Well, it just goes to show, just like her brother Cam told us and Amanda earlier today, if you do things the right way, good things happen to you. Holmes, a very vocal leader, very emotional, 
as her backup Lily Meister gets into the action as well. Yeah, there's the successor after the graduate student Holmes will eventually move on to most likely the WNBA. Swanson fires again. She almost got a friendly bounce there. Swanson has 11 points. And then a foul is called on Janae Terry. Yeah, the way Swanson's been shooting the ball here in the fourth quarter, you'd, you'd think she'd get the shooter's touch. Just can't get the roll that time. As this one starting to look like it's going to be a little bit out of reach for the Boilermakers, Zion. Assuming that is it for Mackenzie Holmes today, she finishes with 17 points. Garzone comes out of the game with nine. So does Claymore McNeil, who has led all scores with 22, five, and five today. I mean, for the, for the second straight game, well, they were one point away from having all five starters in double figures, just one more needed from Garzone. But it just goes to show you not only how you have so many different girls that can score the basketball at such an efficient level, but the ball movement that's just instilled in Terry Morin's basketball team. Lamondola to the hoop. And now the youngsters are really getting involved in the action too, Joe. Yeah, and it's so great to see the youngsters really start to flourish here for Indiana, especially Beaumont and Lamandolia. You've just seen them grow as the season's gone on. They both had uh, season highs just a week ago or two weeks ago in that Northwestern game as we get an offensive foul here from Purdue. Most likely going to have the, the youngsters lead us out with only 250 to play and what feels like an insurmountable lead from Indiana. It sure is a 30-point lead for the Hoosiers under three minutes to go. Joe, I would be remiss on this Super Bowl Sunday not to bring up the big game going on later today. It's Chiefs, it's 49ers. It's a huge one. Yes, sir. I mean, it's the second time we've seen these two teams square off in the last four years. Obviously, the Niners coming into it as favorites, but that guy at quarterback for <laughs> Kansas City is a tough guy to root against, a tough guy to... Tough guy to stop. And, and Purdue head coach Katie Gerald is a huge Chiefs fan. She said she doesn't want overtime or double overtime or anything like that in this game. <laughs> she wants to get home as soon as possible. As we see Gerald's right there wearing the George Karloffis Purdue jersey, now a defensive lineman for the Chiefs. She's, she has a relationship with Andy Reid. She said they text back and forth, and, and she's ready for this big game. Obviously was hoping for a win to start the day, but maybe she'll still get one tonight. Yeah, Karloffis is a, a guy that is – well known, of course, at Purdue, and unfortunately for Indiana fans, I think they remember the havoc he used to wreak yeah. every single season. There's a nice coast-to-coast -coast move. Hey, they count that one. Yeah, it looks like Daly, yeah. Tim Daly will count it. Indiana fans, even with the 28-point <laughs> lead, are beside themselves after that call. But Zion, I, I think. Regardless of the outcome tonight, it'll be a good one. I'm a, I'm a big Trent Williams fan, the left <laughs> tackle. But we'll see how it shakes out. You got a team you're, you're rooting for or predict might come away with it? Look, I, I, I think it's hard to say to bet against Patrick Mahomes. I, I really do. I mean, he's the best quarterback in the world by a wide margin. I think it's hard to really predict against him. I would say that much. So they reversed the foul. It was on the floor. They had a bit of a zebra conference in... <laughs> Corrected the call. As with 90 seconds left, the Hoosiers have 90, leading by 30. Yeah, and this will be a, a tough loss for Purdue. Obviously, a, a tough one to swallow after you come off. You know, the first win that you were able to have in over a month. But Purdue will be back in action soon. They'll face off against the Wildcats next Wednesday. That one on the road. And for Indiana, the 11th straight win over Purdue. Talked about McKenzie Holmes, a fifth-year senior. Unless these two teams meet in the Big Ten tournament or Purdue goes on the NCAA tournament run, she will finish her career having never lost to the Boilermakers. Wow. That's something to be proud of, especially if it's a, a big in-state rivalry like this. And, and none of these players on IU have lost to Purdue as members of the Hoosiers. Of course, Sarah Scalia played the first three years of her career at Minnesota, so she has played them in another uniform. But as IU players, all these players are winless, or are, are spotless, I should say, against Purdue. 
Lamondola tries a three. Her hot night continues. She has eight points and has made all three of her field goals. Yeah, Indiana, even with the starters, they, besides Barges are on the floor, still six of their last six field goal attempts. Career high night for Jules Lamondola as the layup rolls home for Jayla Smith in Indiana. Can dribble it out now with this 33 point win over their arch rival. Yeah, this will be a, a good one for Indiana. Obviously, the, the score margin speaks for itself. They were dominant on both ends of the floor, really cleaned things up defensively after that last game, allowing Michigan State to score 91. But obviously, all eyes on the big man, Mackenzie Holmes. Holmes with 17 points, just enough to surpass Tyra Buss as the all-time leading scorer in Indiana history. Holmes now with 2,000. 365 points in her career, something no one else in the history of this program has done. 